What if I told you perspective drawing could be effortless, even if you don't know the basics? And with these simple methods, architects and interior designers can live sketch over a 3D model to create hand drawn renderings in minutes. No more complex rendering setup on the computer, just really great results. If you want to see the exact file setup, grab this case study in the link below. We are using an app called Morpholo Trace, which is just one of the many apps that are available in the app store. So this is already a finished drawing in Morpholo Trace, and it's a drawing that we use to submit for a building permit here in Redwood City. And this is the kind of drawings that we found very successful or this style of drawing that we've gotten to be very successful with building approval as opposed to renderings with with Photoshop and render engine. So we, when we started to submit this kind of drawings, we felt like we were able to get the project approved much faster than using long rendering process. You can actually see there are two other drawings in the same canvas, so in this view. And this is more of a conceptual quality to it, whereas this one showcased a lot of the architecture, the massing, the surrounding in a way where it was believable. But you know, this one is something you can do quickly to show the client. And then there's the last one, which shows the interior perspective of the building. And this is what we'll look at in a little bit more depth in how I set it up so that you can do it as well. So what's really cool about this workflow is that this workflow actually originated from a 3D model. So if I just pan around, you can see that this is actually a 3D model from SketchUp that I imported into the app. You can orbit the model, you can go to your ortho views, or the back, the front. You can pick a view from basically your perspective views. So there's even sun controls, location controls, that can situate your model in the right place. In a professional setting, this is incredibly valuable because when you're working in a team, and there's usually someone who's doing the big picture stuff. They're the ones sketching. And if you're a young designer, I guess out of school, I was more doing more or less, you know, build this model off the sketch or build a model from somewhere that I can sketch over. So imagine if you're working with a senior designer who's used to asking their staff to print their model shot from the printer, they will sketch over that with a trace paper. This really overrides that need because if they had an iPad, they could easily get the model themselves, bring it into the iPad themselves and take this iPad to basically anywhere they go. They, they can really just have this fluid relationship with some of the younger designers that they currently can't because I'll be honest, a lot of the senior designers that I've worked with, they're, they're not as computer savvy. They don't know how to open a model. They don't know how to pan it around or even print screenshots. But imagine they had this model with them and they can take it anywhere to go. That's like a huge benefit. So let's uh, look at how we bring something like this in. You can see in the same project, you can have more than just three views. What I've done is I've saved the model or the file to my Dropbox and uh, you just need to hit on this 3D model icon. So what I'm gonna do here is open this model, this SketchUp export. What we can do here is under this cog, there's settings for the sun control, the location control. So sitting in the north can be done with this dial right here. So depending on you know, the actual north, you can also go to the actual location. So they have worked with Apple Maps where you can pinpoint, let's say we're in Redwood City, California. So this is going to pinpoint to this general area. Once you hit this check mark, the, the local geographic conditions will be set for this model. From here, you can select a specific time of the day. So you can do some level of sun study from just this view. It's not very sophisticated, but you can get a sense of how the sun is moving based on what time of the day that you set it on. We're going to zoom in here a little bit more. So we're gonna get into the inside of this model. I'm going to make my field of view just a little, a lot wider so I see more of the insight. And I'm gonna zoom in a bit more and get it to a position where I think I'm pretty close to what I wanna see. So I wanna see the, the exterior through the glazing. I wanna see some of this wall right here. I wanna see this dining room area. So at this point, I think this is about the right angle of view that I'm looking for. So there's a couple of things I want to do before I actually set the view. I personally like to have a more dynamic shadow as much as I can. 
So I'm going to bring in the sun, not at 1.30 in the afternoon, but early in the morning. So I think it's more like this 6.30 a.m. sun where the shadow is casting into this living room a little bit more. Having this shadow will, will add a level of depth to the final rendering. And another thing I always do is to set your two point perspective. This will correct your vertical lines in the model to be parallel to each other. This is a really important principle for anyone who is saving model shots, rendering, or even doing photography. When I see students or colleagues who don't do this, it's like an easy, easy miss. So make sure you set it to a two point perspective by hitting the screen check mark you're going to be saving one of the views. And if you zoom out a little bit more, there is two vanishing points denoted by these cross marks, right? If you're just drawing towards this direction, you can see everything is drawing towards this vanishing line. So the first step for me is just to really build the, the skeleton or the bones for the scene. And then from there, you can add in your, your furniture, people, entourage and on the next layer what we'll do is we'll zoom out a little bit more and we'll create another layer in the same size if i have like a couch somewhere in this direction what i could do is without any information on the 3d model you can kind of build your couch slowly and this is what i've done for this project if you have a floor plan it will be easier just to reflect in 3d and then i think this middle area had a table a rug or something like that and then in this dining room area i had a table too some of which you may actually just hand draw so for example if i wanted to draw a chair in this area i might just hand draw it in right at this point i could be a little bit loose because these are just construction lines they're not going to be you know in the final drawings and i'll show you what the inking layer or the final illustrative layer looks like and I'll show you what this final version of this file looks like. You can see this is definitely a little bit more elaborate. I've definitely spent a lot more time to, to design this thing with, you know, with a person standing over the balcony, looking over this beautiful cityscape. There is a, like a fireplace sort of thing in, in the room that just happened to be one of these existing features. And in these areas, you can see there's some free floating elements like the chair, a table, and uh, another rock right here. Most of which is constructed using, by having the perspective tool turned on. The hard part or the heavy lifting, if you will, is, is done at this point. So I'll show you what these layers are, are like, and they're a little bit more thoughtful so this is this layer is just you know the the columns the beams and the layer above that these are the furniture and the layer above that are the texture and the reason why i kind of separate them out is if you wanted to remove some of the textures that you don't like or patterns you can remove them if you had it on a layer by itself as opposed to accidentally erasing something around it so this is a huge benefit to drawing digitally. I wasn't sure actually when I drew it at the time to whether to show the the brick pattern on these existing columns. And I just thought maybe that would be too much information than what I needed. But instead I kind of just drew them in a slightly thinner line weight. And this actually added to the scene then then making it busier. So if there are things that you're not sure if there are different options or ideas that you kind of want to just turn on and off. This is a great for that. If I expand this, you'll see this is called a paper texture. This texture is very nuanced. So by turning this on and off, you can kind of get a sense of this paper quality infused into the drawing. And you can do that by just simply putting it on a multiply blending mode, right? And uh, this really just, I think, soften up the, the drawing a lot, a lot more. So I, I kind of always have this on in most of my renderings, especially rendering work. Just, it looks, feels more like it was drawn on, on real paper. I'll show you how I created these coloring in the bay of the window. And then I'm going to select a pencil. My favorite for coloring is this grease pencil. I'm gonna pick just like a, a general green just to start. But just like traditional drawing away here, I'm really building a, a base color. And then I can go over that with a slightly different shade of green maybe in the more 
darker area or in the foreground. And you can see I don't really mind going over the, ge the geometry in the foreground. Like I don't mind going it over the table because I know I can just go back and really just erase that. So the idea here is really using very quick but simple strokes to build the color off each other. And the overlapping kind of a style of drawing really helps. And then for the sky, what I'll do is I'm gonna pick a, a blue and then a darker shade of blue. You can always vary the opacity using that slider down there. You can see maybe this is even too dark, but the beauty of this is that if this is too dark, you can just cover this up by going over again. I have to be honest, this, this idea or this way of drawing does take a little bit of practice. But it is different than drawing on drawing with real pencil and paper. But once you get comfortable with it, you can get pretty good results, in my opinion. And a lot of the older architects I've worked with, they're really inspired to, to move to the digital things because now they can go back and edit their renderings. But working with real clients, you're never going to get things nailed you know, the first time. We're often going back to, to a revised idea and having the ability to, to edit your work and to revise is huge. And this is one of the biggest problems I had when I was starting out was, you know, I was pretty good at drawing, but you know, some of the sketches I've done because maybe the, the door was in the wrong direction or I've just made some silly mistakes here and there. I didn't end up using the sketch in the presentation because it was just too much pain in the butt to, to fix it. Now working digitally, I don't have that problem anymore. If it's something that I don't like, I can just redraw it. And usually that takes me just a few minutes to do. We're at a point where I've, I've done enough demonstration. You can see that all it takes a little bit of practice and um, the colors builds off one another. Now I'm going to take my eraser tool. I'm going to go off and just erase the areas that, you know, maybe I've gone over. You don't have to be as afraid to make mistakes. And I make mistakes all the time, but just knowing I can go back and erase things and start things over, that has made a huge award of difference in the way I work. I would say that's pretty good, given that we've only been doing this for just a few minutes. So exporting your drawings, there's a couple formats. So depending on what kind of file you're working on. So for this particular one, exporting as a JPEG makes most sense. You can also export as a Photoshop file, which can retain some of the layers in file. They've actually included a new vector format that you can export. If you're drawing a floor plan, you can easily bring that floor plan to like CAD. So you can export it as a DXF and then open it up in, in AutoCAD. Or even better, you can directly open it up in a like SketchUp where you can extrude a model from a, a sketch and be able to generate a view from that model, bring it back into Morpholo Trace, draw off from that. Let me ask you a quick question. What do you think of this workflow, honestly? Are we cheating ourselves using this shortcut? And do you think clients care? And will they notice that this wasn't drawn on paper? And lastly, if you want to take this further, I highly recommend watching my 43 minute tutorial on Mofola Trace for beginners. It's hands on one of the most comprehensive guide you'll find online today. So check it out.